This is a follow-up to my previous video, if you haven't seen it. This is going to be looking at enhancing 720p to 1080, mainly HVX200 and HPX170 footage. Now, the reasons I'm doing that, if you don't know, is because the HVX200 and the HPX don't have real HD sensors inside of them. They actually have 960x540 sensors, and they use pixel shifting and some other stuff way beyond my knowledge to get it to a theoretical high definition. Now, for most people it works, and you know, with a good scene file and good export settings, you can make it look pretty good. However, it's still not real HD. Although some people claim it is, I, I'd say it's just above standard def. So that's what we're going to be doing today, using AI to hopefully enhance 720p to 1080p. <sighs> oh, fuck. Before I crack on, I will say, Seriously, thank you to everyone who watched the last video. It's done really, really well, and I'm shocked by it. I didn't think it was something anyone would be interested in, apart from, like, two or three people, but pe I've got discussions going on forums, I've got tons of DMs, lovely comments, and all this stuff, so I want to say thank you, seriously, for watching it and taking an interest in it. It was quite a surprise. Now, like I mentioned in my last video, Topaz was telling me it was going to take around 10 hours to do a couple of 720p to 1080p clips. So I've only done two <laughs> this time, and it's still racked up a, an impressively short time of six hours to do two. That's not an exact number, but it was around about that. It was another evening of my laptop being on its side, with the laptop churning away overnight and me waiting for it to catch fire. I mean, enhance the clips. So, now that it's done, it's been actually a couple of days, I haven't really paid attention to it. Let's have a look. I've got OBS on my computer, again, and hopefully it will cut to it now. Let's crack on with it, shall we? So here's the folder. So we've got the HVX200 clip of Joe and one of Sean. So just to explain myself before anyone has a go again, I'm using the ramp slow mode clip because if you've ever worked with uh, the HD Panasonic cameras, you'll know it's with the MXF file format. And so it splits the video and it splits the audio. So I'd have to go into Premiere, export the single clip and then bring it out when I've already got an all in one clip here to use. So that's my reasoning to using them. Same with the DV footage as well. Once again, what was it 110 megabits a second or something like that? On that one, that's a really big one. Can't even, what, 100? I can't tell. My After Effects export settings has varied from time to time quite drastically. I think I've got it down to a T now. So hopefully these massive file sizes won't happen again. Anyway, let's crack on. Let's watch the original one. Some footage of Joe. You know, and it, it looks okay, you know, it's not terrible. Admittedly, I think I had my detail level up quite a bit high, which now that I've uh, done some more reading into those cameras, looked at Alan Hughes's white paper on these cameras, I've discovered that having it above like three or four, and it just isn't a good idea. So that's the first clip. Let's just have a watch of that again. You know, it's not terrible. You know, it's pretty good 720. It really nice swooshed fucking tray flip. So let's have a look at the 1080p version of that clip, the AI enhanced one. It does look a little bit better, not as like drastic as the SD to HD one, but it does look better. Let's have a look at that again. It does look a bit better, yeah. Hmm. Now, before I crack on with the next clip, I've just got to make one thing pretty clear, and this is one of my biggest, second biggest gripes with this software. The MP4 files it outputs, for watching back, they work great. But anyone else who wants to use this in like a professional setting where you actually go in and edit the clips, for the love of God, please get Shutter Encoder or something. Something that can rewrap your video files. Because I had the biggest pain in the arse working with those .mkv files. Premiere Pro just, it would import the clip, 
and then it would freeze, it would crash, and it was such a pain in the ass. I would try and go in, import the clip, not even play it back, try and export just the clip, and it would freeze on the export page. I've never had anything like that before. I don't know what flavour of MP4 it is, but whatever it is, it does not work in Premiere Pro. Maybe it'll work in Final Cut, maybe it'll work in Vegas Pro, or it would not work in Avid, it'd probably just completely kill an Avid system. Whatever it is, just get Shutter Encoder or something else that can rewrap those files. Please, just do it. It'll save you so much fucking time. It's just, yeah. Rant out of the way, let's watch the uh, next clip. Shot on the HPX171. The pinch. Now let's have a look at the 1080p version of that, the AI enhanced one. And I can tell you right away that it's boosted the shadows a bit, like kind of brought them back up a bit. Interesting. It's very, it's like, compa like I said before, compared to the SD to HD, this is a very subtle enhancement. It's very subtle, it's not too in your face. I feel like with the HPX, the HVX one, it was quite a bit more significant, you know, mainly because that's like a, what, a 15 year old camera, like a 14 year old camera, so it does actually make some improvements, but the HPX already had the better sensor in it, it's not a full HD sensor, but it still had a better sensor, better in low light and all that stuff, it's, I don't know, and, 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 mm. hmm, hmm. Some people were saying the same thing about the SD to HD clips, and I think those clips had a far more obvious improvement. However, with this, it's apart from maybe on HVX200 footage, that HPX clip, I mean, it was very, very subtly better. I mean, you could tell there's a little bit more refined edges and maybe a little bit of detail brought back, but apart from that, I don't know, it's just... Mm. That's a tough one. At the end of the video, I will include, um, you know, side-by-sides and stuff like that, so you can actually have a look for yourself. I think that basically, th what this basically tells me is, unless you have, like, an original HX200, not like a 200A or anything like that, just, like, a bog-standard 200 from 2006, there may not be too much of a point of going with this software. If you shoot in SD, then yeah, go for it. I think what this comparison shows me is the fact that unless you've got like an original 200 from 2006, there's not much point, I don't know. Maybe once I've like put them together side by side and I can watch them at the end of this video, maybe I'll see some more differences or anything more drastic. But just looking at it, I don't know. I really, I don't know. It's a tough one. Hmm. Tell me in the comments if you see anything different because, I mean, apart from with the first clip, shot on the HVX, I'm struggling on the HVX one. Well, that was a bit underwhelming, wasn't it? I was kind of hoping for, you know, more kind of in-your-face, full HD kind of improvements, but no, not really. Leave a comment below if you see any difference or if it looks in any way just a bit better. I think I'm going to go now. I think I need to re, you know, evaluate my life decisions considering I left my computer on for 10 hours on its side, which is probably not great for the environment and it probably could have melted. But it's like I said in my first video before I'd even done the 720 to 1080. I already said that people were saying that SD to HD is like the most reasonable thing to do and actually yields better results and yeah those people were right 
I mean, apart from with the first clip, everything else, the, the second clip was just a bit, yeah, underwhelming. So this reiterates that point. If you want to do SD to HD, go for it. It probably makes your video look a thousand times better. But maybe don't bother with 720 to 1080. Just my opinion. Thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, see you around.